Monster Hunter is losing its identity, and to see whether or not that's a good thing, we're gonna need to look at the changes the series has made throughout the years, why they've made them, and what they can tell us about the future of the series. Monster Hunter is one of the most complex, nuanced pieces of media ever conceived. Its premise is one that scholars have scrutinized for decades. It, it's about hunting monsters. At the most basic, straightforward level, Monster Hunter is a game about hunting monsters, making clothes from their skin, weapons from their claws, and then using this newly acquired equipment to then hunt more monsters and repeat the cycle until the sun burns out. But just how you go about hunting those monsters is what makes this series special. There are 14 different weapons and dozens of monsters to test them out on, but with the central mechanic of this series being the hunting part, the hunts have to be incredible, and fortunately, they are. Monster Hunter's combat is unlike anything else for a few reasons. First, there's customization. With 14 different weapons, you've literally got over a dozen different choices on how you want to approach the combat. But that alone isn't enough. Each of these weapons has something in common. They're all deliberate. Keep in mind, I don't mean slow. The difference may seem insignificant, but it's an important distinction to make. Simply compare the Greatsword of Monster Hunter 4 to that of Monster Hunter World. The two different iterations are still around the same speed. In fact, you could probably argue that the hit-and-run play style of 4's Greatsword is even faster than the more charge and tank-heavy style of World. The difference here is how deliberate the weapon is. When I swing in 4 Ultimate, there isn't much I can do to protect myself afterwards. Sure, I can roll, but that covers just about as much distance as if I had just broken my leg and fallen over instead. To add to this commitment is the fact that you can't cancel charge attacks. Once you start, you're stuck with it until death do you part, and believe me, it will. In World, on the other hand, you can cancel your charge attacks into tackles that effectively make you invincible. It's this difference that gave Monster Hunter a unique feel to me. When I first played the game back in 2014, I remember getting absolutely ruined by Zamtrios for hours until I eventually got used to the timing of its attacks and, perhaps more importantly, the timing of my own. That's something most games don't really do, or at least don't focus on as much as Monster Hunter. In Monster Hunter, you have to think multiple steps ahead in regards not only to your opponent's attack, but to yours as well. This creates a brilliant feeling where you can almost see what's going to happen before it actually does, because everything in the game is so methodical. The slight delays to ensure your attacks hit their mark every single time, and the perfect positioning to ensure the attacks of the monsters never do is just brilliant. But that's all changing thanks to one simple yet monumental alteration to the gameplay. The change lies in the commitment that I was talking about earlier. Attacks have less and less commitment to them, and mobility is now greater than it's ever been. But nothing is more representative of this change than dodging. In Monster Hunter games of the past, rolling was used to reposition, which it still mostly is. Attacks are so large that just dodging to the left and right generally won't be enough to get you out of the way. Fundamentally, rolling isn't that different from what it used to be. It's the options that you're afforded outside of rolling that change the way the game is played. The change they've made is that Monster Hunter isn't about positioning anymore. It's about countering. Obviously, this can be seen in the Longsword, the perfect example of a weapon that was once all about positioning and waiting for your opening for one massive combo. It was all about a slow, gradual, methodical use of your normal attacks, your Fade Slash, and your Spirit combo to incrementally increase your power. Now, however, it's all about timing your counters to gain Spirit Gauge and deal comical amounts of damage. But this isn't the only weapon like this. The greatsword I mentioned earlier is an equally clear example of this more counter-heavy gameplay. With the tackle, you don't have to put your weapon away between attacks. You instead tackle at just the right moment to deal a bit of damage and even potentially KO, and go right back to charge attacks. But I can keep going. Look at the Insect Blade, a weapon that previously you had to hard commit to a jump in 4 Ultimate and even in Generations, but now you're able to change your direction mid-air. Or even the Switch Axe, which now has a Fade Slash just like the Longsword. Although, I do admit, as a Switch Axe main, I'm totally fine with this. All of this leads to gameplay that's far less committal. Even the ability to roll backwards has massive implications on the gameplay. What was once a weapon-exclusive skill is an option that almost every single weapon just natively has. This counter-heavy playstyle can be seen throughout the newer games, and as a result, they're much faster now than they've ever been. So naturally, this raises the question, is this a good thing? 
See, the issue here is that what's changing is what made Monster Hunter stand out. Its slow yet deliberate combat system is being replaced with something much faster, more fluid, more flashy. And so, is that a positive change? Well, it's complicated and it involves a few aspects of the way the games are designed. The first being the subscribe button. I've noticed that most of you haven't pressed it. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that stands out is the fluidity of it all. Monster Hunter has been a very rigid game for a very long time, and there's nothing inherently wrong with that. However, this new layer of fluidity and speed allows for more fast-paced hunts. Now, granted, speed is nothing new in Monster Hunter. There have always been monsters like Brachydeos, Tigrex, and Nargakuga. The difference now, however, is that with the hunter being as fast as they are, the hunts feel far more involved than they did in the past. You don't have to just stand around and wait for the monster to finish its rampage. You can counter it, or jump over it, or do any number of things that don't involve simply running away. But something very important to consider is that this is a fine line, as if the hunter gets too fast, then we end up in a situation opposite to the older games, where the hunter is so fast and powerful that the monster's attacks don't matter anymore, since they can never even hit you. But speed isn't the only thing to consider here. With new mechanics of the hunter come new mechanics for the monsters. One of the most obvious examples of this being Narwa, a monster that forces you to use the wire bug to dodge about 40% of her attacks. Things like this wave that go across the area, or this massive laser beam, or these platforms that you have to climb up to avoid attacks like this. But again, this can go too far. When the mechanics become too complicated, we lose what should always be the main focus of the game, the monsters. So once again, this is a fine line. However, I believe the newer games walk this line rather well, and while they're not perfect, they present some of the best hunts in the series when they get it all right. So, is it a good thing that Monster Hunter is changing like this? Well, while some people will say no, which is a totally valid response, I think it is. Because regardless of how things change, Capcom's main goal remains the same, to make the best games possible. And with that sort of ambition in mind, I trust they'll always make something special. Even if it is just a bit different. And speaking of different, here are two different videos. One on why video games matter, and one thing that Sunbreak shouldn't bring back. And if you like videos like this, feel free to subscribe, it would really help me out and I've got more videos just like this one coming soon.